Well, hello. Hello, beloved. Um, how is the training going? Um, hopefully better every day. I uh, know there are things uh, out there on online and the internet where people live in such an um, um, unusual, powerful type of lives. Um, you know, heavenly lives. And I do remember part of my uh, growing up and going to college. There were this type of uh, professors that to turn me off because they were so good. They, in their minds, they would know exactly um, how to do things and um, they would have the solution of the mathematic equation and just write it down and I would feel so behind and it's like, I'll never make it. And there were some of those teachers that would connect somehow with me and start telling me a story, even in, uh, you know, algebras and uh, calculus and just kind of tell me a story and help me to go through a journey that I would feel part of it. So now while the first type of professors would stretch you and would challenge you and for the people that really want to get somewhere, achieve and they love that those type of super intelligent out of this world type of professors for lots of us for lots of us to have uh, i would say a normal way of learning um we felt that this these guys with the story that connected more with us kind of help us helped us to grow and open our eyes and minds trying to understand we, we felt that those were better. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking what type of professor, <laughs> what type of uh, recording this is. And I, I'm, I'm thinking sometimes it's, um, it's a challenging one, talking about the place where um, I know the, the Lord wants us to be. But I think mostly, especially this series about the training and uh, Joseph, I think it's the second type. Uh, looking at the journey of your soul and where you are and how you get things and things that you uh, get stuck at and you cannot move forward to that. Um, see the encounter the experience maybe can get you unstuck but lots of times it cannot show you how to stay unstuck and keep going so just wanted to throw that in because we are in the testing phase um, we did um, talk about the testing of quietness and I was um, I was saying that it's not that it's not only important what you say, but sometimes it's important what you don't say. And it came to mind Job. Um, he did say lots of things, but he did not say. So he was quiet regarding what the wife said. Curse God. He was quiet. He didn't do that. So. Words, um, very important. When you get into the testing phase, words will be tested. Not only the words you say, but what you don't. The quietness, the silence. The second one, the testing, is uh, something I call faithfulness. And we see that in... Um, in Joseph's life and of course the words of Jesus come that the one that's faithful in small things in little things 
will be shown greater things or entrusted with greater things. So faithfulness is not necessarily the big ministry, the big things and praying for people. And, but sometimes faithfulness is in uh, obeying in small things. And I love this about Joseph's soul and there is fruit there. I want you to see that and eat of that fruit. So first place where we see faithfulness, he comes to check on his brothers, even if he knew they hate him. I, he could have could have told his dad, it's, uh, hey, um, I'm not going, you know, they're haters. That's not the right environment for me to grow. <laughs> Genesis 37, 12. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he, Joseph, said to him, Here I am. I like that. It's, it's, it's something um, about the way his soul was that he would not think, you not put himself first. But I don't feel good about that. But it's not. They're not going to receive me well. He, he doesn't put himself first. He puts the brothers first. Yeah, but the brothers hated him. He puts them first. And also he puts his father before himself. Here I am. Right? The father desired, the father wanted to do that, and he said, here I am. Okay. Um, this um, obedience, this type of a, um, a servant, even if he was the favorite son. So this is an obedience from a favorite son. You are the beloved son. And <laughs> the Lord says, are you ready? And I hear you saying, here I am. <laughs> Amen. So faithfulness, it's a, it's a good series of testing. Sometimes it's in home, sometimes it's with spouses, with kids, with parents, and at work. It could be uh, uh, insignificant things for some, but important in the testing place that your soul is in. Another place, house of Potiphar. So he goes to Potiphar. Um, you know, he was sold there. He is a slave. He started with no credentials. <clears throat> you know, I, I've seen people, um, you know, ask them to do things. And it's like, well, but I'm not going to talk to it. They don't pay attention to me. I'm nobody there. You have to send me a recommendation. And it's, I understand the place of recommending and recommendation. But Joseph had no letter of recommendation. He came with no rights. He started from minus, not from scratch. As you might start with someone or the ministry or wherever the Lord sends you. He started from minus. He was a slave with no rights. No rights to do, to say. He could have been killed. He could have been sold. Who, who cared? The Father did. God did. Absolutely. <laughs> but I'm saying from, from the way the relationship was with these people, you know, we, we really like to be introduced, covered, um, defended, um, you know, red carpet ahead of us so we can go in and make our obedience to the Lord much simpler. So, yes, I did drive there. Everything was prepared. I did what you said. Okay. What about if there is not a preparation? What if there is no gas in the car? What if the people say, hey, don't come anymore? 
but the Lord wants you to go. What about that? <laughs> so, um, um, the house of Potiphar, uh, chapter 39, verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did, what Joseph did, to prosper in his hand. I mean, it must have been clear signs, right? Because that Potiphar probably had lots of slaves, servants in the house. It was a big guy. It was a big house. So he could have compared, could have seen, it's like, wow, how come we have this done so well? How come it's so clean in this room? Oh, how come everybody's coming and they pay their debts on time? What's happened? Oh, Joseph was in charge. Joseph was in charge here. Then he was in charge here. And everywhere he goes, it's impossible for your boss, for your master, for your leader, it's impossible not to notice that the Lord is with you because he sees that successful prosperity every place you go. And, you know, it's, uh, believe me, he was not put there from the beginning to be the leader of the house. No, probably he had to, you know, clean dirt. <laughs> Who knows what... You know, there are lots of dirty jobs that the slave, the new slave in the house, new slave, Joseph, nah, go do this, nah, go do this, you know. He, he, he didn't start with any position, right? But he noticed. He saw that the Lord was with him. Uh, Potiphar didn't know God. He had the Egyptian gods, right? It's, he didn't know. But something about Joseph, maybe the way he prayed, maybe he went in his room, maybe he noticed or, you know, uh, looked. Uh, it's like, oh, he's praying. I wonder whose God is praying to. Maybe he heard the name of Jehovah God. And so he knew the Lord is blessing him. Then he made him overseer of his house. Duh. Of course. <laughs> I, I, I see you're the, you're the best at what you do. So take over the house. And all that he had, he put under his authority. Wow. From the minus, from the slave. Oh, it, it, this, is, this is someone that has faithfulness. Okay, no more excuses. How come that's not happening? How come that's not done? How come, yeah, but no, yeah. You know, um, Joseph had none of that. And he got in a place where he was so trustworthy that everything he would do would prosper. Wow. It was from the time that he made he had made him overseer of his house that all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. <laughs> I knew this. I knew that wherever I work, that department, that company is going to be blessed. I was watching the stocks of the, the company I was working for. And, you know, the bonuses and this and people like, no, we're not going to get, I don't think we did well. I, I, you know, they were the most prosperous years. And the Lord would say, because of you, because of you, I bless Potiphar. <laughs> no, you, you, you are not a trend. You are not a number. With the business, with the country, with the industry, No. You are there with the Lord, and the Lord blesses that place. Faithfulness. Faithfulness in the place that you are now. 
And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. <laughs> Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had, except for the bread which he ate. <laughs> That's so cool. He didn't care. I, I, got, I got my food, everything else. Joseph takes care of it. Um, he continued that faithfulness. And again, in a very unusual places. You know, we keep learning kingship. I'm a king, uh, you know, son of the king. I'm, you know, I'll be faithful with the angels and the kingdom of God. And um, what about taking the garbage out? <laughs> so Joseph goes to prison. Not to Pharaoh's house, to prison as a convict with no rights. Again, it's almost like what he accumulated for those years being faithful are wiped away and he starts again from minus. Oh man, some people will say, where is God? What's God? What's God doing in my life? I, you know, I was faithful there, he got me promotion, and now I lost my job, and now I have nothing again, and that's not Joseph, <laughs> no, um, he had no rights and lots of wrongs, <laughs> that's the prison, <laughs> Genesis 39, 20, then Joseph's master, the master of the prison, took him and put him into the prison. I'm sorry, he talks about Potiphar, Joseph's master, took him and put him in a prison. A place where the king's prisoners were confined. Because the guy, Potiphar, was pretty high up. right? And he was there in the prison. But the Lord, but the Lord <laughs> was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph sent all the prisoners who were in prison. <laughs> wow. He, he couldn't step somewhere without becoming a leader. He couldn't try somewhere, no matter how low it was, without becoming a leader. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Almost like the same thing as Spotify. I gave him everything. I'm just eating my meal. Joseph takes care of everything. I mean, this is the faithfulness. Something that's a testing for our lives when we go through this phase. Maybe not looking something spiritual, maybe not in a place where, uh, you know, you, you get revelations and visions and you get translated in heavens. And, but in the place where you are, as you drive your truck, right, as, uh, as you clean the dust from the house and as you vacuum faithfulness. This is so important. I want you to see that the Lord wants to give you to prosper everything that your hand touches. And yes, you can tell people, oh, you want me involved in this project? It will prosper. Just watch it. Okay. So another, another thing of faithfulness. Okay. Faithfulness is be patient. It's like faithful to the end, as it says in the book of Hebrews. Okay, waiting to the end. They will have a, as the end of their patience, end of their faith. They'll have the salvation of their souls. Okay, so faithfulness is not just what you do or don't do, but faithfulness is enough length until until the Lord says it's time to move on I'm promoting you and this is what waiting for God's timing in prison 
Even if he interpreted the dreams, the Lord sent him those couple of people to interpret the dreams. They saw that the dreams got fulfilled, um, but still he had to wait. And he says that again in Hebrews, we, ha we, we have need of patience that after we did the will of God, we can receive what was promised. Okay, so this is part of this faithful waiting for God's timing. Okay. So it shows here in uh, Genesis 40, 13, with three days, Pharaoh, now within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place. This is what he um, um uh, what he prophesied, uh, what, what he um, interpreted, the dream of the butler. And you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler. And here is the seed. Here is what, what Joseph is planting. And I, I know, uh, I know, maybe, maybe he was in a little hurry. <laughs> he wanted some... <laughs> to be uh, redeemed, wanted, wanted some redemption. He didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> but remember me when it is well with you, and please show kindness to me, make mention of me to Pharaoh, and get me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews, and also I have done nothing here that they should put me into the dungeon. <laughs> He was right. So he's interceding with the butler, knowing that the Lord will do what the interpretation of the dream was. And verse 23, Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. See, faithfulness, it's waiting, continue, stand until the time is coming. And he said so clear, like we read in the Psalm 105, until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. So, so important to know. Wherever you are, if this is the season of testing, um, he is walking with you. He gives prosperity to you. Leave that impatient expectation alone. Leave it. It's, it's not you. And trust the faithfulness of the Word of God for your life.